guys, how you all doing? Dr. D. Nice Beaujolais here, solar powered and energized by the S O N. It's first Wednesday, you all, and as we do every first Wednesday, we talk about depression. And today we're gonna talk about antidepressants. But before y'all we do, y'all wanna see my outfit? Hold up. gorgeous, isn't it? It is from India. It's my sister's. And she lent it to me. She actually wore this to my wedding. It's so beautiful. It's got gold beadings and gold embroidery. It's like gorgeous. Anyhow, that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about antidepressants. And if you all don't know, the theory for depression is, is that there's an imbalance in the brain's neurotransmitters. What's a neurotransmitter, you may ask? Well, you have one brain cell, you have another brain cell, and the space between it is called a synapse. And this brain cell wants to talk to this brain cell, so it wah, spits out a neurotransmitter, and the other one ah, catches it, spits it out, and catches it. And the neurotransmitters, you've probably heard of them before. Norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, epinephrine. Those are the hormones that help the brain cells communicate with each other. There are, of course, countless others too, but those are some of the more co popular or common ones. All right, so that's the mechanism of depression. And so most of the antidepressants that are out there act on these neurotransmitters to regulate them up, down, whatever, just to help even them out, balance them out, so you can feel better and not be as depressed. Before we go on, let me make something clear. I'm a doctor. I am not your doctor. I'm your friend, that's a doctor. I'm just giving you some information. You have the responsibility to go and sit down with your own personal physician or healthcare provider and talk with them about your needs and what you need to do to, in order to feel better uh, from your depression. Is that okay? All right, let's get into the different classes of antidepressants. SSRIs, you're very familiar with them. Those are Prozac, Celexa, Zoloft, Paxil. You've heard of those before, right? Yeah, those are SSRIs and that class of antidepressants, they can raise the serotonin levels and help you get on the road to recovering from your depression. Then there is the SNRIs. That includes medicines like Effexor, Cymbalta. You've heard of Cymbalta. I know you have. That have they have commercials all over the TV, 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 TV about Cymbalta. How do you all feel about prescription medications being having commercials by the way? Let me know in the comment section below. Okay, I'm curious about what you all think about that. Anyhow, those are the SNRIs. Of course, there are others too. But those are just some of the examples. The SNRIs, they increase the amount of serotonin and norepinephrine in the brain to help you be on the road to recovery from your depression. Then there is the, um, the atypical antidepressants. Those are medicines like bupropion, um, remeron, trazodone. They fall in that class. They work on very, in various different ways to regulate those neurotransmitters in the brain. Then there are the tricyclic antidepressants. Those are old, old, old school ones. As a matter of fact, they're not really used as much these days for depression as they are used for fibromyalgia, chronic pain, for sleep things like that, not really, the tricyclic ones are not really used as antidepressants as much anymore. Then they are the MAOIs. <laughs> it's like an alphabet soup of antidepressants, right? And this is another class that's not used as much. It's out there though, an available option to treat your depression. And uh, there's a new antidepressants out there, and I have to look at my notes for this one. It's called Vil Vilazidone. Vilazidone. It's like an SSRI, then it acts on the serotonin in another way too. We won't get into the details of it. It's out there though as an option. It's one of the newer options. And 
those are essentially most of the classes of antidepressants that are available out there. Now, it's time for you to start an antidepressant. You've decided that, you know, that's the route you want to go and you sit down and you talk with your healthcare provider about it. There are a couple of things that they're going to do in order to decide which one to start you on. First, they're just going to ask you. Sometimes you've been on antidepressants before and you have a preference of what to be on. Sometimes your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, you may have seen a commercial <laughs> that you're like, you know what, I want to try that one. That one looks like the one that will work for me. So between you and your healthcare provider, you all will look at some of all the other factors, maybe some of the other symptoms that you have along with your depression in order to de determine which one will be the right one for you. Keep in mind, once you've started these medicines, most antidepressants takes about two weeks to really kick in to full effect. So your healthcare provider will probably want you to follow up with them after about two to four weeks of being on the medication. Another thing to remember is that a third of the people respond to the first antidepressant they're on. That means that the other two-thirds may not respond to the first medicine they're put on. So at that follow-up visit, you may need to increase, increase your dose. You may need to change to a different medicine. It may take several tries to get to the medicine that will work for you. And sometimes some of those medicines are even combined in order to help you to that level that you need to feel well with these antidepressants. Then... Um, also, while you're on the medication, you can expect to be on it for anywhere from about 8 to 12 months, sometimes longer. That's something that you and your healthcare provider would sit down and determine at the follow-up intervals throughout the course of you being on the medication. All right, it's time to stop it now. You've decided you're coming off the medicine, you feel better, whatever the case may be, it's stopping it. It's stopping time. You can't just stop it. Most antidepressants would have you feeling horrible if you just stop it cold turkey, especially Paxil. Prozac, not as much. Overall, we will usually taper people off antidepressants over the course of about one to two weeks. And once again, that's something you and your doctor will talk about. And let's be honest, there are side effects out there. These are prescription medicines, and they all have potential side effects. Of course, when you fill the medication, the pharmacist and your primary care provider will go over the side effect profile of the medicine with you, which, don't be scared, for a lot of them, there could be tons listed. Um, some of the more common ones that we see, though, or um, weight gain. Some people, some of the antidepressants can cause weight gain, not all. Some of them can cause sexual dysfunction. Um, decreased libido, some of them can call dry, cause dry mouth, nausea, things like that. Of course, if you experience any side effects, you talk to your doctor immediately about it, okay? I don't know. What do you all think? That was just a brief summary of the antidepressants and things to consider when you're starting one and a few suggestions and information about it. Hope that was helpful, okay? Um, you know, I could go into a long video talking about each class of antidepressants if you want me to, and just let me know in the comment section below what you'd like to know, okay? All right, and see you next week for Wisdom Wednesday. We're back to our usual Wisdom Wednesday schedule. All right, guys, talk to you later. Remember, if you liked it, like it. If you learned something, subscribe, and if you loved it, share. Bye, guys.